Teratogens are any toxins in the environment that can cause birth defects in developing embryos. In fact, 5% of birth defects that occur in children are due to the exposure of teratogens. Teratogens can find their way into mothers through foods, drugs, medications, or diseases. The amount of exposure pregnant women have with these toxins affects the amount of damage that is done. The bigger the dose and the longer the exposure, the worse the birth defects may be. Some embryos are more genetically predisposed than others to the effects of teratogens. Teratogens are most harmful in the first trimester, however they can take effect from 10 days after conception up until birth. Three teratogens that may be affecting you are alcohol, cigarettes, and retinoids. Young moms are often unaware of the various teratogens that can harm their babies. Alcohol is commonly consumed in social settings and is also a very harmful teratogen. An article done by Nichols in 2007 explains how the consumption of alcohol by women of all ages has increased, but especially in young women. Babies affected by alcohol may either have fetal alcohol spectrum disorder or fetal alcohol syndrome. FASD can have a range of effects and symptoms. The disorder can manifest itself behaviorally, cognitively, emotionally, or physically. It is estimated that 1 to 5 percent of the population has FASD, but many go undiagnosed. FAS is considered the severe end of the fatal alcohol spectrum. Children diagnosed with FASD can have brain damage, birth defects, developmental delays, behavioral problems, poor growth, and many more issues. Alcohol as well as other substances such as nicotine, should also be avoided while breastfeeding because they remain in the mother's milk after several hours. In all, researchers say the safest amount of alcohol is no alcohol. Another teratogen which vastly affects fetal development is smoking. According to Ernest L. Abel in an article written in 1980, nicotine from cigarettes crosses the placental barrier and H. nicotine stays in the placenta. This results in H. nicotine's radioactivity affecting the fetus's lungs, trachea, adrenals, kidney, and intestines. The most frequently reported effect on the fetus associated with smoking during pregnancy is intrauterine growth retardation and are generally small for gestational age. Intrauterine growth is defined as the poor growth of a baby while in the mother's womb during pregnancy. Additionally, the developing baby weighs less than 90% of other babies at the same gestational age. The reductions in birth size that are associated with smoking are dose related to the number of cigarettes smoked during pregnancy. The more woman smokes, the lower her baby's birth weight. Three retrospective studies by Berman and Weisner, Schroeser, Steele and Langworth, and a prospective study by Ney have reported a greater incidence of sudden infant death syndrome in babies born to smokers. Bergman and Weisner reported that the relationship between maternal smoking and sudden infant death is related to the number of cigarettes smoked per day. There is no finding of long-term effects in children born to smokers compared to children born to non-smokers since children most affected by maternal smoking are probably already represented by the perinatal mortality data. Clinical data has linked children born to smokers by their decreased birth weights, which approximate to about 40 to 430 grams, and additionally, children born to smokers were on average about 1.4 centimeters shorter than those born, born to non-smokers. Okay. Retinoids are another teratogen that may be affecting you. According to a research article written in 1995 by Soprano and Soprano, retinoids are any naturally occurring or synthetically derived compound that contain vitamin A or retinol. Humans are extremely sensitive to retinoids and may be exposed to this teratogen through the overconsumption of vitamin A or via prescription medications. Overconsumption may be a result of eating too many foods rich in vitamin A, such as carrots, or using too many dietary supplements. Common prescription medications that women may be exposed to are often used to treat skin conditions, such as Accutane for acne, Etretinate for psoriasis, and Altrans RA as a topical treatment for acne. Etretinate is particularly harmful as, a resi as it resides in the plasma of the mother's blood for extended periods of time. In one case, a mother stopped using her medication 11 months prior to conception and her baby still suffered adverse effects due to retinoids in the etretinate. Birth defects associated with retinoids include heart, limb, and thymus defects, cleft palate, spina bifida, impaired cognitive abilities, and many others. With the previously mentioned teratogens, it is vital that you speak to your doctor about any lifestyle habits that may affect your baby, which include, but are not limited to, diet, alcohol consumption, smoking, and prescription medications. By doing this, you minimize the risk Good of harming your baby and avoiding any developmental problems which may accompany the use of these teratogens. So the best advice is to be aware of your surroundings, take care of yourself, and know that your actions, whatever they may be, are not only affecting you.